What's going on, guys? It's Steve. Oh, my goodness. This is it's bittersweet for me, okay? This is a bittersweet moment. Carmelo Anthony just announced last night that he's willing to sacrifice, not not per se come off the bench, but take less shots and not having to score 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 points every night. And the Thunder are winning. He only scored 18 points in the last two games, the first time in his entire career. There's two things that happened this season for the first time in Carmelo Anthony's entire career. First of three things. First of all, this is the best team he's ever had surrounding him. That's one. Two, he said he's willing to sacrifice and you know uh he, he doesn't he's not gonna put up as many shots for the first time he scored in single digits two games in a row for the first time in his career okay and on top of that oh man for the first time in his career he's averaging under 20 points per game now let me read exactly what he said and this is from espn he says i think at this point this process we're still trying to figure it out still trying to see how we want to play so we're still trying different things out there uh, for me personally it's just about doing something different seeing where the team really needs me on a night-to-night -night basis and just be willing to do that and be willing to sacrifice not every night having to score 20 or 30 points and i'm good with that and it's a good feeling as long as we're winning i think these past couple of games that we've been winning we've been moving the ball well and putting a complete game together and as a result we have won two games in a row now this is incredibly um how should i say this this is incredibly it, it's bittersweet because for the first time in my in my lifetime i'm seeing carmelo anthony play a different role you know i'm seeing him not be the first option on the team. I'm seeing him average under 20 points for the first time in his entire career. And it's not like, oh, you know, he's averaged 20 points per game for his whole career for like two years, and now he's finally averaged under 20. No, I mean, I, th I still think he might average over 20 by the end of the season because he's naturally just a great scorer. But I'm going to read you his stat line for his entire career, all 15 years. 21-6-3, 21-6-3. 27, 5, and 3, 29, 6, and 4, 26, 7, and 3, 23, 5, uh, 23, 7, and 3, 28, 6, and 3, 26, 7, and 3, um, 25, actually 25, 7, and 3, 23, 7, and 3. It's just bittersweet, man. It keeps going 29, 27, 24, 22, 22, and now 19. It's really 18.7, but I'm rounding up. So 19 points per game. And it's like, okay, Melo, I see you. He really wants to win this NBA championship, and he's understanding. You know, you know what? Maybe it's time for me to sit back and say we got a younger player like Paul George. We have younger players like Russell Westbrook. Let them do their thing because real talk, Russell Westbrook's only averaging 22 points per game. Paul George is only averaging 20 points per game. Melo's averaging 19. Now, my personal prediction how it's going to end towards the end of the season, I think it's going to be Russell Westbrook averaging around 25, Melo averaging around 20, and Paul George averaging around 18. Um, just because Paul George is naturally a good scorer, but he's not naturally a 20 plus point per game score which is why for his career he averages like 18 points per game and it's not a knock on him and Carmelo Anthony's just it's naturally going to go to him whether he's you know uh well he's definitely going to be starting but whether he's you know working with the second unit he's naturally just going to get those buckets you know and Russell Westbrook's the best player on this team so he needs to be averaging 25 points per game uh and he's averaging close to a triple double which is good uh but the Oklahoma City Thunder they're doing their thing I mean they're starting to win games they're looking good good they're 10 and 12 <laughs> you know it's funny how you say oh you know they're looking good but they're 10 and 12 they had a very bad start to the season a very very terrible start to the season and now it's looking like you know they're serious about things now they have a long long climb ahead of them they're still going to finish towards the top of the western conference because it's not really that big of a gap now if they were in the eastern conference that'd be a different story uh like for example okay see they're ninth right now in the western conference behind new orleans and utah who are seventh and eighth with only two games ahead and then portland's three games ahead with 13 wins and then minnesota's only four games ahead and 
Denver's, you know, four games ahead. And then San Antonio, who's the third seed, is only five games ahead. Okay, and that's without Kawhi Leonard. And Kawhi is going to come back in around, you know, a few weeks. So they have some time to grow. They can go on a win streak and just take that gap and go to, like, a top three seed in the Western Conference, which is probably where they will finish behind Golden State and possibly Houston. Now... I sit here. I tell you this right now. Does this mean they're ready to compete and you know they're ready to dominate and beat the Warriors? And no, not quite yet. They're gonna get there, but they need to play together. They need to keep playing together. They need to understand. Like for example, some things that still need to be changed. Doesn't make sense that Paul George is averaging more minutes than Russell Westbrook. That just that doesn't make sense whatsoever. I mean, we're talking about Russell Westbrook, the man who averaged a triple double last year. So it doesn't make sense that Paul George is getting more minutes than Russell Westbrook, especially when Paul and Melo are pretty much the same position, small forwards. Even though Melo is playing the four spot now, that doesn't make sense to me that Paul George is getting that many minutes. Now it's not a knock on Paul George. People think I hate Paul George. It's not that I hate him. I just feel like he's not a superstar. He's he's an all-star player, but he's not like a LeBron or a KD or a Russ or a Melo or, you know, players like that. Um, Melo in his prime, that is. Uh, so I, it's still, it's a weird thing to see now. Another thing this team needs in order to improve is efficiency. The only person shooting decent from the field to Steven Adams and that's because they're all like layups and dunks and stuff like that but not just that Paul George is shooting 41 percent that's absolutely terrible Russell Westbrook is shooting 40 percent terrible Carmelo Anthony who's shooting 42 percent terrible okay absolutely terrible but the ironic part is is they're shooting better from three than they are in terms of relativity uh, than they are from the field. Paul George is shooting 40% from three. Russell Westbrook 34% from three. And Carmelo Anthony 36% from three. Obviously, it's all relative in terms of the value of the three-point shot. So, you know, the percentage actually increases, which is why I said it's all relative to why they're shooting better uh, in terms of other players as well. But it's just it's very strange. Now, the Oklahoma City Thunder... They have a long stretch, you know, they, they have a long way to go in terms of being able to not just compete, but get their chemistry up because that is what they need. That is probably the most important thing when it comes to winning games is chemistry. Now, their next stretch is kind of easy, so <laughs> they're probably going to go on like a major win streak very soon because tomorrow night they play the Utah Jazz, then they play the Me- the Memphis Grizzlies, who started off good, and then they fired their coach, and they were going on a losing streak and all that other crap. Uh, they have, it, they're going up against the Pacers, and then they go up against the, my Nets, then the, the Hornets, and then the 76ers. So, you know, they have a pretty, e- I wouldn't say easy, um, but relatively easy. And then they play the Knicks and then the Nuggets, then the Jazz and the Hawks and then the Jazz and then the Rockets. So pretty much they have, what is that? They have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 games. And in that 12 games, they only have one really good team they have to play against, and that's the Houston Rockets. So you can expect like a 10-game win streak from the Oklahoma City Thunder very soon because, I mean, they're not playing any good teams. And then they go on to play some Western Conference teams like Toronto and Milwaukee. Um, They play Houston on Christmas Day. That's going to be very exciting. Uh, Los Angeles Clippers, Phoenix Suns, Lakers, Dallas, Portland, Minnesota, Sacramento, Charlotte. So they really don't have that many tough teams. I mean, from now all the way until the middle of January, they don't have any tough teams to go up against. So we see them right now as a ninth seed. I guarantee you by the end of December, they'll be like top three seed in the Western Conference. But not Probably not even that long. Uh, probably in by next week or the week after, they'll be like top seed in the Western Conference. Not number one, but like top one, two, three, or four, depending on when Kawhi comes back and all that other crap. But I still think, okay, so he's going to finish top three in the Western Conference, I'm, I'm, my guess is is going to be Golden State. Who I don't know if Houston's going to slow down. That's the thing. Golden State, OKC, Houston, and then San Antonio. That's my predictions for the top four in the Western Conference. Through the playoffs, the semifinals are going to be so legendary because it's either going to be Houston versus Golden State, Houston versus San Antonio, Houston versus OKC. 
OKC versus Golden State, OKC versus San Antonio, San Antonio versus uh, Golden State, and vice versa. And, you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. Uh, it's gonna be a very entertaining Western Conference playoffs. Spinny man, Steve, cannot wait for the playoffs. Okay, he's about to take over. Carmelo Anthony, I salute you, man. You're still my favorite player ever. I'm out. Peace.